OK then, now for this last part, we've got to work out the probability that someone complains. And that's going to be when the weight of the popcorn is less than 180. So we need to work out the area to the left of 180. So we'll just mark that in on here. And we can project this value down onto our standardized graph and we're looking then for this particular Z value here which you can call it Z, Z1, Z2, whatever. I'm going to call it Z2 because I used Z1 in the earlier part. So that's going to be given by that area to the left of Z2. Now to work out Z2 we just need to do the observed value which is 180 minus the mean 200 all divided by the standard deviation and we saw that the standard deviation in the first part was 11.8821 in my case anyway and do use the unrounded version so as you don't get any rounding errors and if you work that out you find that you end up with minus 1.6832 and so on okay and remember that's telling us how many standard deviations 180 is below 200. Minus 1.68 then below the mean. Now that we've got that we can say that the probability that x is less than 180 then is going to be exactly the same as working out the probability that z is less than our uh, minus 1.6. 6832 and so on standard deviations below the mean. Now to work out something like this what we need to do is use the normal distribution tables but the chances are that when you look at your tables they're going to give you probabilities for a normal distribution our standardized normal distribution this will be z We'll have zero down the middle here but the z value that you're working with tends to be to the right of this line to the right of zero you're given a z value here little z and it gives you the probabilities to the left of it so we can't handle this at the moment but to get around this problem then what we do is we mirror this value over the zero line to the other side so it's going to be a value over here instead of it being minus 1.6832 it's going to be the positive version of that so it's going to be 1.6832 okay that'd be that value z value there and that area that I've shaded here will be exactly the same then as the area over here so working out the probability of z being less than minus 1.6832 is going to be exactly the same as working out the probability that z is greater than 1.6832 and so on. But that still doesn't help. At least it's put the z value to the right of the zero but the tables won't give us this area over here to the right of this z it only gives us to the left. But that's no problem, I hear you say, because the total area would be 1 and all we need to do is 1 minus the area to the left of z. That is the probability that z is less than 1.6832 and so on. So when you take your tables now, okay, your tables are most probably going to show something along these kind of lines. You'll have your z values here and a column to the right of it which most probably will say the probability z is less than any given value z. There'll be lots of values in these columns okay but what you're looking for is a z value close to 1.6832 and depending on your tables you've got to take a value as close as you can to that. The tables I was looking in gave a value of just 1.68. They gave values to two decimal places. And alongside 1.68 was 
the value 0 0.9535. And there were other values below that. So I was interested in this row here. So all I need to do then is do 1 minus this value. Okay? 0.9535. It's telling us that roughly 95% of the distribution lies below 1.68 standard deviations above the mean. So 1 minus 0 0.9535 and what does that give us? Well it gives us 0 0.0465 okay and you can round that up if you like say to three decimal places and you've got 0 0.047 to 3dp and there you have it okay